Our discussion of forces and melting points in the previous section leads us to ranking materials and melting point. The key is to be able to look at a chemical formula and decide what type of solid we're looking at. Once we know the types of solids we're dealing with, we can rank them based on the strengths of the forces present. The thought process goes something like this. We try to identify high melting solids first. We ask, is the solid a network covalent solid? In general, you cannot tell simply from a chemical formula whether a material would be network covalent. So there are four materials that we need to know as network covalent solids. Carbon as the element, silicon as the element, silicon dioxide, and zinc sulfide. If it is one of these, then we know it will have a high melting point. If the material is not a network covalent solid, we next ask if the material is ionic. We should be able to identify ionic materials as combinations of metals and nonmetals. If it is, then we know it will have a high melting point. If the solid is neither network covalent nor ionic, then we conclude that it is molecular. Molecular solids would have low melting points. We would need to check for the intermolecular forces present, as we did when we were ranking boiling points of liquids, in order to rank these. Note that we should also be able to recognize metallic solids by recognizing an element and its location on the periodic table. But because of the variable nature of metallic bonds, we won't use them as examples, since their melting points are unpredictable. In our first example, we are asked to rank HBr, krypton, and neon in melting point from lowest to highest. We determine if any of these are high melting. Are any on our list of four materials known to be network covalent solids? No. Are any of these ionic with a metal and a nonmetal? No. We then conclude that all three of these are molecular solids. So we look at the intermolecular forces. HBr is polar, whereas krypton and neon are nonpolar. None of them have hydrogen bonding as a force. Since HBr has two forces, dipolar and dispersion, and the other two only have one force, dispersion, HBr will be the highest melting. But what about the other two? Remember that for two similar materials that only have dispersion, we use molar mass as the tiebreaker. So neon, which is lighter, will have the lowest melting point, while krypton will be intermediate. In our second example, we have ammonia, dioxygen, and silicon. Again, we start by trying to identify high melting materials. Are any of these on our list of known network covalent materials? Yes, silicon is. Are any ionic? No. So we conclude that ammonia and dioxygen are molecular. In ranking these materials, we already know which is the highest melting. That would be silicon. For the other two, we have to determine which intermolecular forces are present. The Lewis structure of ammonia would have a lone pair on the nitrogen, so it is polar, while dioxygen is nonpolar. In addition, hydrogen bonding would be present in ammonia since hydrogen is directly bonded to nitrogen. We conclude that dioxygen would have the lowest melting point while ammonia is intermediate. Our final example asks us to rank calcium sulfide, ammonia, and potassium bromide. Are any of these network covalent? No. But we do identify CAS and KBr as ionic based on their chemical formulas, each having a metal and a nonmetal. We're left to conclude that ammonia is a molecular solid. Given this, we immediately identify ammonia as having the lowest melting point. But how do we decide between the others? What is the tiebreaker for two ionic solids? Be careful. Molar mass only works for two solids where dispersion is the only force. That's not the case here. Electronegativity, which explains a lot, is not useful here either. Instead, we go back to Coulomb's law. 
remember that we're trying to rank forces that hold the units, in this case the ions, together. The charges in CAS are 2 plus and 2 minus. In KBr, the charges are 1 plus and 1 minus. The higher charges in calcium sulfide mean that the ions are held together more tightly, so calcium sulfide will have the highest melting point of these materials.